Hello and welcome to the Daily Mill for Friday the 10th of May 2024. In today's Mill news, shock departure yet again. What a season it's been. Uh, more people leaving. The big dog, Steve Kavanagh, and also as well Alex Aldridge and Billy Taylor. Um, it was uh, put up on South London Press, London News Online, uk unofficially unofficially they had it first although they, they don't call it an exclusive but they did have it about half an hour before um the southern news i think maybe the southern news just copied the uh the south london press uh yeah this popped up so what's all this then uh meal departures for chief executive steve kavanagh and director of football operations and recruitment aldridge uh, Mill Chief Executive Steve Kavanagh and Director of Football Operations and Recruitment Alex Aldridge have both left their positions. The South London Press understands that Steve Gallon, who formerly headed up the recruitment at Charlton, will be in charge of that department moving forward. Kavanagh is an experienced football operator who has been at the Lions since October 2016. He was appointed an EFL non-executive director in June 2022. He formerly held the same role at Southend United and became chief executive at Charlton, replacing Peter Varney after previously being di director of finance. <coughs> uh, Aldridge had been director of recruitment at Stoke before replacing Harvey Bustle by returning to Millwall in March 2022. He had three years of being head of recruitment at the South London Club before that and became the youngest person in that role in the country aged 28 when he took it on in July 2017. Um, uh, Gallon held various senior roles at Charlton, including director of football, head of recruitment, and director of recruiting, as his title ha was rebranded frequently during the tenures of Roland de Chatelet and Thomas Sarngard. Uh, he left in August 2023 and has been assisting former Alex boss Lee Bowyer with the Montserrat national team. Um, so there you go. So this was put up this morning, like I said, by uh, Richard Corley of the South London Press. There you go. Uh, was it true? Was it not? Um, I think the uh, Southern News, I haven't put got it up because it's basically the same, but then they say a few things differently. And they say, well, the club haven't denied it. Um, so there you go. The club haven't denied it. They haven't confirmed it. So we wait to see what happens with the club. And at around 2 p.m., quarter past two, it was put up by the club on their official website. Club management, senior management departures. Millwall Football Club can confirm that Steve Kavanagh is leaving the club as CEO after eight years in the role. Uh, Steve joined Millwall in 2016 and enjoyed promotion back to the championship in his first season and worked tirelessly to ensure its stability within the league for many years to come. Millwall's chairman, James Berylson, said... I would like to thank Steve for his leadership and dedication to the club over the past eight years. Uh, Steve joined when we were a League One team and oversaw our promotion and return to the championship. Uh, Steve was a significant force within the club to stabilise and grow both football and non-football operations. Uh, he steadfast uh, determination in advance and the redevelopment around the then, as well as being a leader in the FL, added to his accomplishments. Uh, I know that my father, John, uh, shared this opinion and enjoyed the close work and relationship he had with Steve, and I wish him only the best in his future endeavours. In addition to Steve's departure, Billy Taylor... And Alex Aldridge will also be leaving the club as Chief Operating Officer and Director of Football Operations and Recruitment, respectively. The chairman added, I, I would like to thank Billy and Alex for their outstanding service to the club. Uh, Billy's journey started in 2011 as a uh, match day program and social media editor. His work and ethic was unquestionable, as was his talent and passion to do his very best for the club in the several roles that he oversaw. As a result, he earned numerous and deserved promotions before his most recent appointment as COO. Uh, Alex uh, began, began as a recruitment officer for the club in 2015 and was quickly promoted to head of recruitment. After a short spell in the same capacity as Stoke, Alex returned to the club as director of football operations and recruitment and helped the club to improve all aspects of scouting, 
facilities and analytics. Uh, Billy and Alex will always be part of the Mill family and I have high regards for the, both of them. Uh, the, club, the club would like to thank Steve, Billy and Alex for their dedication and incredible efforts during their time at Millwall and wishes them all the best for the very future. Uh, further updates regarding future appointments to the senior management team will be provided in due course. Wow. So we have the confirmation. We don't have confirmation of the Steve Gallon, but then we did. And that came soon after. Mill will confirm Steve Gallon as director of football. Uh, Millwall Football Club is delighted to confirm the appointment of Steve Gallon as director of football. With a long and distinguished recruiting, scouting and coaching career in football, Steve arrives at the club to provide support to Harris, uh, to Neil Harris as Mill and Millwall as a collective. Steve spent two decades at Queen's Park Rangers and worked previously director of football at Charlton Athletic. He has a proven track record of establishing a process and platform for identifying and developing talent at all stages during his years at QPR and Charlton. His main focus at Millwall will be to use his experience to elevate all parts of football operations from the academy to the first team. Everyone at the club looks forward to welcoming Steve and wishes him all the very best in his new role. Further updates regarding the senior management team will be announced in due course. So, interestingly, um, why and how? And how, when you have three of them leaving at the same time, it would suggest that this is them being fired. Um, it's not like you could imagine, you could see that Steve Kavanagh would be leaving on a high. Um, He's been here for eight years. Uh, you could tell after the death of John Berylson, uh when he 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 give an interview on like BBC London, and he's almost in tears. Uh, very emotional. So you could imagine uh, that after that, it, you would start to think of you things few and think uh, maybe it's time to move on, especially after the debacle with the appointment of the new manager. Um, but in the end. You've just had a win, a W, uh, with the lease. You got the lease done, got it pushed through. Time to ride off into the sunset, all said and done. But if that was the case, then why is Billy Taylor and Alex Aldridge oil also being let go? And why was it, why did the staff on the press only tell us about Steve Kavanagh and Alex Aldridge? Now, Steve, uh, Richard Corley of the South on the press has a, uh, he basically you know he's he knows what's going on at Millwall probably before Millwall do. Where's he getting his information? And now next season, will he, will he have the same information being fed to him? Because was the was the person feeding him from Millwall was that Billy Taylor? Because Billy Taylor was head of communication, so he was obviously the press guy. Um, did this story leak before? James Berylson or whoever pulled the plug wanted it to leak. And is that why Billy Taylor's been added to the pile? Because for all intents and purposes, like Billy Taylor seems to be a nice guy. I don't don't know what's happened there. Um But uh yeah, so we'll see next season if Richard Corley still has his finger on the pulse. Um, if he doesn't, then we'll know that it was probably Billy Taylor that was feeding him, feeding him all, all that information and all those stories. Um, but uh, yeah, kind of weird. Um, and yeah, we we literally don't know. There are no, we don't know why this has happened. Uh, we can only speculate. There are no only rumours. Obviously, at the time of the situation where we were facing relegation. Um, the blame had to go somewhere and it went first to Joe Edwards and then to the people uh, who put Joe Edwards in place and that was seemingly Alex Aldridge because what's f from what we know from what we could gather and you can check the videos I made a video, made a video most days nearly every day except when I don't about what was going on at the club every day like what's in the press and it seemed that Nathan Jones had been lined up 
to be my old manager and then they decided to swerve off and get Joe Edwards in. And then after the 4-0 win that Joe Edwards had, Alex Aldridge come out and said, I gave an interview uh, to the South London Press, I think it was, um, saying how he was the one who called up Joe Edwards. Joe Edwards didn't apply to the job. Joe uh, Alex Aldridge called him up and said, do you want to apply for this job? So, so he's cr- he's crowing about how what a, what a great what a great thing it was that he he made this happen after one four nil win at one of the worst teams in the league at the time, um, and then once it turns sour, you've got nowhere left to go because you've already you've counted your chickens before they hatched and they hatched and they want they want chickens they were crocodiles. Um, and they turn around and bit you on the bum. Um, not only that, but the recruitment. Was the recruitment all that? I don't know. Um, seemingly the better players this season, Tanganga. That that was a, a Joe Edwards recommendation. Apparently, um, uh, according to Joe Edwards in some of his interviews, he said that. So, we'll see. Um, but yeah, obviously there's there's more to come out. We don't know what's going on. Um, is this is this a view to something happening behind the scenes? Because before Wednesday, when that lease didn't wasn't granted to Mill, we didn't have a lot going on for us. Now. We have, we are an attractive investment because I don't know if you, if you ever go on right move and all these places where there's websites that are selling houses and stuff. If you sort by price and you go lowest, you'll see there's like a plot of land and it will say 1.5 acres, 20,000 pounds, but we've planned and permission to build blah de blah de blah. So someone has bought some land gone through all the process of getting planning permission to the council, got the planning permission, and then they just sell it to someone else. They've done all all the hard work of getting planning permission, then they just attach it to the land, sell it on. Is that what we're seeing now? Um, I don't know. Seeing as what uh, Mill's track record of, of entering into business deals um, would you trust them to project manage the building of the stuff that they want to build or would you outsource it Cause, considering like all the what Tavern, uh, Asda Euro Ferries uh, Recast uh, Husky like oh you can name like, Peter de Savary oh, uh, Lacey oh, all of the deals and stuff that was going on that have turned sour. Um, we all don't have the best track record of getting things done. So maybe it's time for them to. Add. Maybe now they've got the the. They basically own the land because they got a thousand year lease, and it said that in the Lewisham documents that because the lease was so long, this is testament to a sale, and that would need to be voted on by by the by the people uh, at running the council. Um. So. Yeah, what is going on? What is going on? We don't know what we do know. Steve cabinet has gone. Billy Taylor has gone, and Alex Aldridge is gone, and and uh, Steve Gallon is coming straight away. Uh, because obviously, the summer transfer window is approaching. Here's an open jet, but obviously, deals can be done um, before uh, they can go through officially when the window opens. So, yeah, there we go, and interesting to see what happens and uh, what comes out and uh, how that all, all shakes out because obviously we know Gary Rowett was mutually departed that he said but basically it looks like he was kind of let go and uh, so this clearly doesn't seem to be a mutual departure this seems to be being more more the way to letting them go. Um, so 
are we going to see them come out in, in the South London press and give, an, give out an interview and stuff? Um, because I don't think they're, they're going to let them uh, announce it on the club website. Obviously, they're not employed, employed by Mill anymore. Uh, if they do, or maybe on LinkedIn or somewhere, if he's trying to get another job. Um, but uh, we'll see. We'll see how it turns out. Not that I saw that this coming, but I believe it was in yesterday's video. Um, maybe the day before. No, it was yesterday. So I showed you um, the news from Lucian Council's website about the lease. And on it, the press release from, from Lucian Council, they had... A quote from the mayor, Brenda Dacus, and they had a quote from Steve Kavanagh. Fair enough. When I went to the Mill FC website, they had the same quote from Brenda Dacus. They did not have any quote from Steve Kavanagh. They had a quote from James Berylson. So... I didn't, I'm not sure if I mentioned it, but I did think it. I was like, that's kind of weird. Like, they couldn't even put two lines from John, uh, from Steve Kavanagh in the thing. That was kind of weird. So, yeah. Um, exciting times, like I said, but here's the thing. Hopefully we don't go to Chelsea and get their CEO... Who had or some junior CEO who's never had a CEO job before, um, and fuck it up like we we fucked up putting Joe Edwards in place. Uh, we'll see what happens. Um, like I said, we've got projects to get through. We've got the we've got the new lease. We need to get the we've got well, we've got two projects that need to be done. So I think we need someone who has a track record of doing that, um, of getting deals done, brick brick and mortar deals, real deals like building shit and engineering shit, uh, both at the training ground that we got to get done and uh, around the den. So yeah, we need a builder. We need Bob the Builder. To come in and uh, be the new CEO and get things done. Um, but. Can you get someone. That can do that kind of thing on the money they were offering. Because uh, if you look at the accounts that were published on. Company's house website. Uh, it looks like from what I can gather. It doesn't mention Steve Kavanaugh by name. But it does mention that they're paying one of the directors. 450k a year in, that's including pension contributions so that's not a lot in the world of um, competent CEOs uh, they normally go for like a million plus so we'll see how we go um, but uh, yeah hopefully we don't get a cheap pay out on that and try and get the, the Joe Edwards of the CEO world we certainly don't want that some Bitcoin or what, the crypto crypto kid uh, as a new CEO or god forbid some diversity or some uh, female black disabled uh, CEO just to tick boxes because that would just be weird um, now moving on to the other stuff until we get more news from uh, out of the club it's Friday so Doubt there'll be anything until Monday at the at the earliest. Uh, moving on to this, also from the MillFC.co.uk, the club's official website. Ryan Longman's Leicester Stunner nominated for EFL Goal of the Month. Uh, Ryan Longman's e uh, effort against Leicester City has been nominated for the EFL Skybet Championship uh, April 2024 Goal of the Month Award. The old city loney picked up the ball around 30 yards from goal before unleashing an unstoppable, uh, unstoppable effort attempt in off the crossbar against the league leaders with his strike now up against three others with support was able to vote for their favourite. To see and view the list of goals nominated, click uh, the link below. So yeah, it's a vote. Um, 
so you, you uh, can vote for him. The others are Josh Windass, uh, Emmanuel Laff, and uh, Amari Hutchinson. So we'll see how that turns out. Now, uh, moving on to this. From the Southwark News, they've taken today of all days to say who was Mill's signing of the season. Well, I can 100% say that it is Neil fucking Harris. Um, but I think they're talking about players, but um, yeah, it's Neil Harris all day long. Morning, noon and night. Um, so, here they Here's the thing. I don't think any of them have had a complete um, outstanding season. Some of them have had the highlights and half a season here, half a season there. A few injuries, Nisbet and Brian. Denor fell out of favour when Harris came in, but before that he was alright. But we won't get results then, so what does that say about... Uh, is, like I said, pretty football, alright, but if you're not winning, what's the point? Uh, Wes Harding had his moments, scored a few goals, uh, vital goals, good stuff. Um, Sarkic, a uh, bit hit and miss until uh, Neil Harris came in, is mostly a hit. Brooke Norton Cuffey uh, kind of dropped for being too lightweight when uh, Neil Harris came in. Alan Campbell, who's he? Uh, didn't see him, never saw him. Uh, Ryan Longman, uh, again, not really that spectacular until Neil Harris came in. Uh, Tanganga, probably the standout and probably the, the one to vote for on this. Um, he's only here for half a season though, but uh, probably the most consistent over the time that he was here. Obafemi, unfit when he come in. Um, not the best. Uh, what, two, what did they say? Two goals in 14 appearances. <sighs> a strike rate of 1 in 7. Uh, even for a mill team, that's not the best. He don't create that many chances. That's not very good. Adam Mayer, again, barely seen him. Uh, I think he's supposed to be one for the future. He look, he's always got a, fa he's got a face like a smacked arse and not happy. Uh, never smiling. Uh, I, I, I don't know. Yeah, he seems, seems to be moody. I don't know. I mean, that's just how he is. A uh, very, very stone face. Doesn't, doesn't smile at all. Um, but uh, yeah, there you go. So, shall we vote? Shall we vote live? I haven't voted. I'm gonna vote for Tanganga. There's been 90 votes. Uh, yeah, Tanganga. It's, yeah, it's got to be in it. Um, yeah, I would. I would probably agree with that. Actually, the way this is turning out, the wisdom of the crowds. A Tanganga's got half the votes, and then Casper Denor, and then Ryan Longman, and then Sarkic. And then Brooke Norton Cuffey. Uh, um, I would probably put Wes Harding above Kevin Nisbet, probably. Uh, although there's not much in it. Um, so there you go. Because the, the, the reason for Kevin Nisbet barely played through injury. And uh, Harding, like he's just been out of favour. Because Tanganga come in. So. Um, and Kevin Nisbet, high price. Uh, and he's not really full full there, is he? Um, where where's Harding cheaper chips and he's done better than expected. Um, but yeah, pretty much agree with that. So ninety people voted. Um, ninety four now. Uh, now moving on to this. Uh, and it's reset itself like it does. Uh, obviously I told you yesterday about uh Mill playing Birmingham. They've got a date Friday the seventeenth. Uh, I highly recommend you go to that game if you can. Um. It's now, there were some games today, it's been decided. Swansea have booked second place in the South. They will play Sheffield United in the, the other semi-final. Uh, it's going to be at Sheffield. And if Sheffield win that and Mill will win theirs, it looks like the final will be in Sheffield, uh, which is the a replay of last season's final, but in reverse. Because last season it was at the Den. Uh, obviously this season Mill have played up, up at Sheffield and I, I think it, we did beat them uh, I think it would go down it wasn't that long ago uh, yeah we won 3-0 so that, that Sheffield United put that on YouTube so check that out and see, see how that went um, but Swansea also played up at Sheffield United this, this season because you only play them once 
they lost 5-1 and the only way we're going to get the final back at the den is if Swansea beat them so yeah, yeah we'll see how that turns out uh, here's the thing you in that circumstance you might be f hoping for maybe like I said if the re the release list and the retain, retain list comes out and then the the under 21 lads who have been released uh, maybe they decide not to play in the game they leave early or they do play and, and they're a bit off form because they're upset that they've been released but Sheffield United in the Premier League their season finishes a lot later than ours so they probably don't have to put their retained list out for about three or four weeks so that might not be an issue but hopefully Sheffield uh, Swansea can beat uh, Sheffield United and we have an, a Mill Swansea final at the den that would be nice but it uh, is what it is and Swansea can be can be caught by Bournemouth who have one game left to play on points but they can't be caught by um they can't be caught by uh goal difference Swansea's goal difference is something like 23 and Bournemouth's is like nine because Bournemouth played a tippy tappy let's play it out from the back and they don't score a lot of goals doing that in the juniors. So, I hope there you go. Even if they won, they couldn't catch up to Swansea. So Swansea booked it. Um, now moving on to this uh, daily check of uh, the players that have been announced to be released. We got two from Crystal Palace, which might interest uh, us because obviously Crystal Palace being local to Millwall, it's an option that the players could transfer over if they don't want to change their lives too much. If they got kids at school and stuff. James Tompkins, uh, West Ham uh, junior, a long-time West Ham player, moved to Crystal Palace. Uh, 35 years old though, so probably not what we're looking for, uh, to be honest, although I'm sure he's still a decent player. Uh, in the Championship, same old, same old. We do have uh, the news from Plymouth Argyle, uh, the players that they're letting go or keeping, uh, or they're in talk, or offered new contracts too. Um... Yeah, but apart from that, not much has come out yet. Obviously, Saturday, tomorrow, will there be any more? I don't know. It's kind of weird that it's taking so long. Uh, I think maybe directly after the season ended, uh, maybe they went on for a week's break. They come back for, for a week, and then they have basically what most of June off as well. So there you go. Um, League One as well. A few teams, obviously the ones in the playoffs still 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 waiting about. Um, but yeah, we wait and see. And on that note, thank you for watching and goodbye.